Right, it's getting to that time of year again when, contrary to today, it's getting cold, it's getting wet, it's getting time for dirt bikes. Today we are at Coney Green MX, which is one of the places Craig Chamberlain uses for the Kawasaki motocross experience. We're going to be test riding sort of new but not new Kawasaki KX250X and KX450X. I say not, not really new, these bikes appeared in the middle of Covid. Obviously we were all too busy eating pizza and watching Netflix so didn't get to see much of them. So they're doing a bit of a relaunch of them. They're based on the really popular and successful KX250 and 450 motocross bikes but with some changes to make them more suitable to sort of cross-country enduro style riding. If you're not clued up on that, motocross is on a track with massive jumps and it's probably the stuff you think of when you think of off-road bikes. Enduro is slippery technical terrain in the woods, tracks where the track's a lot longer. It's not a short sort of stadium type track. It's a big, you know, can be a 30 mile loop on a big Welsh enduro. So the bikes need to be softer, more compliant, easier to ride and using a wheel and a tire set that makes more grip. So we're gonna check out some of the details on the bikes and then try not to ride through too much cow poo. These videos only happen because of the support and help from our sponsors. Support the companies that support us. So this is the KX450X. The changes between motocross and enduro are the same for the 450 as the 250. First and most significantly, wheel size. The enduro bikes have an 18 inch rear wheel, which allows an enduro tire a wider sort of fatter tire that gets more traction on technical terrain. And the tires are an enduro tire, so they're designed for low grip surfaces, roots, rocks, that sort of thing. Next up, most obvious, side stand. If you've got to park your bike in the woods, you might need a side stand. I don't know why that's such a critical enduro thing, but there's a side stand now, so you can fill them up at a normal petrol pump. You can park them on the side stand in the woods while you go and look at the beautiful scenery around you. Sump guard fitted to these, a bit more protection in the kind of gnarlier, rougher terrain enduro bikes tend to end up in. So in terms of the actual riding feel of the bike, the biggest change in that respect is to the suspension. KYB suspension on these bikes, supposedly very sensitive to being changed. So if you change the settings, you'll feel it, even as a kind of hobby rider. The springs are softer for the enduro models and they've changed the damping just on the the adjusters on the external part of the forks. The point is an enduro bike doesn't need to land from the height of 10 double-decker buses like a motocross bike does. It needs to make grip in the woods and give the rider confidence. So that's what those changes are aimed at doing. We're gonna take it for a spin now and see if it makes any difference to a Wally like me. I have snuck a go on the 250. I've been riding the 450 so far and there's probably tons of footage of me riding it and not talking because <laughs> I was far too busy holding on. That thing is an absolute monster. But for me on this terrain, this 250 is lovely. Big old slab here. And just tractor it up. That's it, we're done. We're finished riding. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I have had a wicked day riding both the new 450X and the 250X. New, new-ish. First time I've ridden them. What Kawasaki has done is they've taken their motocross bikes and given them a, a little bit of a cross-country enduro-y makeover. They've not been trying to make these some sort of, you know, extreme enduro trialsy woods weapon for going up the the most technical, careful, controlled bit of slab. They've made them for big, fast, open terrain, fast enduro races, stubble field enduros, which a lot of the enduros are. Now, if you're into enduro, that'll make sense. If you're not into enduro, what I've said there is gibberish, more gibberish than usual anyway. So if I can put it in better terms, if you can imagine Mallory Park with all the chicanes and all the extra bus stop chicanes in Mallory Park, and then imagine Silverstone, massive Grand Prix track. That's what I'm talking the difference here. These things are designed at Silverstone. They're not designed at Mallory. In the same way that a full factory 230 horsepower ZX10 British Superbike would be lovely around Silverstone and an absolute handful at Mallory Park. That's what I'm sort of talking about here. That said, 
I've ridden plenty of trialsy wood stuff on these today and particularly the 250X it surprised me it's been really easy to ride in that stuff the grip's been pretty good here so that helps but I've definitely had a great time flicking it up over logs and hopping up technical technical tricksy little hills on the 450 i tried doing the same thing and i won't won't lie it ate me for breakfast it is a monster of a bike i think my right arm is about a foot longer than it was it has just been pulling at your hands all day and thankfully everyone said that not just me you know there's some really good enduro guys here and all of them have kind of gone you know you've got to be fit and you've got to be strong to get the most out of that 450. get out in this open terrain on this sort of whoop de doo section and the 450 is fantastic really fast loads of horsepower and you can shift up the gears and use the torque so when you get out of the technical stuff the 450 really comes into its own and it's a joy to ride so one of the lads here today has actually been racing british championships on a 450 his bike's here he's done a few extra mods so he's got a flywheel weight just to soften the 450's power a bit more and then a few changes in terms of mooses rather than inner tubes to prevent punctures and you know, a bit personal touches here and there and his own suspension settings but even he said the standard suspension on these bikes is so adaptable it really gives you a big scope for tuning it into what you want out of the bike in terms of enduro racing in fact in terms of off-road riding it's something that is always interesting to me bike selection is so critical more so i think than circuit racing or road riding we all like talking about our bikes quite a few people of us myself included, like riding lots of different things and changing. Off-road, you see people really are fussy about what bike they have, because if you're trying to get up a difficult hill and you do it on one bike and it's harder and another bike and it's easier, if that's the difference between you making it up that hill and not, it's really difficult to want the harder to ride bike. And it's much easier to go, I'll buy the easier bike rather than try and make my riding better. With circuit racing and track and road stuff, you can always make it. You're always gonna get from A to B. Some bikes are better for certain things than others, but. There's not that kind of hard stop where you didn't make it up that hill and if you had a different bike maybe you would have so i think that drives everyone to be pretty fussy with what they ride off-road which in terms of that extreme enduro stuff it makes people a little bit nervous of maybe jumping to something different than the i'm going to say the that orange brand you know everyone relies on those everyone there the default go-to enduro bike it's really nice to see first you know honda Yamaha, Kawasaki, all coming out with their own enduro bikes and giving you another option. Now let's talk about the kind of technicalities of riding this 250X or 450X, if you were to go and buy one. One of the big stumbling blocks is it's not registered, so you can ride it on the road. That said, it's not difficult to get them registered. So if you go to a dealer and say, I want a 250X as a trail bike for doing a bit of trail riding, green laning, and entering a few hare and hounds enduro type races, the dealer can get it registered for you. And on top of that, Whole Shot MX have developed a lighting kit so you can have a rear light and a headlight and a wiring loom to go with it. That's 290 quid plus fat. These bikes are a chunk cheaper than most of their competitors. So you, you, you spend a little bit over what you've bought it for, but you know, you've still saved versus going down the kind of default route of everyone else's enduro bikes. Are they better, are they worse? You know, I think that's a personal taste thing. Certainly I've ridden bikes that are easier in the woods than this, but actually out the woods on the whoops, it's really, really fun. And for me, gave me confidence to hit stuff really hard and really fast. So if you wanted a dirt bike that you could do a few kind of motocross practice days on, the odd hare and hounds, and could do a little bit of short trail riding on it too, I think 250X and the 450X are a pretty good bet. And I would also say, unless you're only riding fast open stuff or kind of pretty strong pretty fast and a bit of a hero by the 250. the 450 is a phenomenal bike but it is a lot of bike and unless you're a pretty accomplished rider it's going to be too much bike for you please don't take that as patronizing <laughs> i'm happy to admit it's too much bike for me in certain sections in here today look long arms terrified <laughs> that said if i was going to go and do some bigger trail rides some trips around portugal some faster endurers and even some rally stuff, then the horsepower of the 450 is absolutely addictive. And there's a little bit in the back of my brain that can't help but want to put supermoto wheels in it and <laughs> do skids everywhere. Long and short of it, two new enduro bikes from Kawasaki. 250's easier, 450's wild. I've had a mega day. Thanks.